Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the teardrop square drop camper build. In the first episode, I showed you how I built the floor. Now we're going to tackle the walls, the two side walls and the front wall. At the moment, I'm just hopping in there to see how the height is. I want to do a little angle cut on the front, but I don't want to compromise my headroom. I've just made some spacer blocks because it's going to sit there. These are the skids, remember, so I don't want to lose my height on that. So that's 53 millimeters, enough for the 45 mil and then the little bottom treated ply. I'm going to do an angle on the front. I figured out these earlier. It's a 150 mil drop and that is 500 long. Here's a little mock-up. So assuming my bed is about that thick, and of course once I'm sitting on it too, it'll be thinner. And I've kind of done a mock-up roof line. There's the ceiling, the roof, the framing, and that'll be the interior. So I'll sit in there again. Hmm. Yeah, it's getting cosier. So that felt quite short inside and yeah I'm bringing it down on purpose but I don't want to make it uncomfortable in there. I do like the visual effect on it on the outside and plus my car's probably only that tall anyway so it seems like it should help with the airflow. I'm going to be putting a little skylight window in here so I want some angle. I think I'm going to take 40 mils off of it. We go 110 there. Let's still keep it at 500 long. There's our new angle. It's not as deep as I'd like, but um, I'll move this up and hop inside and see the difference it makes. That's going to work perfectly. You know, as much as I plan things out on paper, nothing beats actually making a little scenario and sitting in there yourself and trying it out. Because once you screw and glue it, there's no going back. So I'll cut it as that, and then I'll start seeing where the door's going to go and how big it will be. I've traced the door out, leaving enough room for the framing between there and there. So here's the door, 170 from the top. Uh, 850 mils from top to bottom, that bottoms out here, and comes over to the door, uh, 700 mils I believe, and I've also traced the edge of the trailer. Now I'll lay it down and do it properly before cutting it out. I'm framing out the walls, and here's where it gets tricky. Remember, we've got this height here from the top of that spacer up. So I want, if we look on the end, I want the wall to come down and cover that ply. So from the underside of there to the top is 65 mils. So that's what it's going to look like. The interior floor is here. And that is going to hang down the side of the trailer. I've cut the top piece of framing so that the roof supports can fit in there. And that leaves you with, so it's kind of tricky to cut that angle. But what's cool is the off cut will fit perfectly just like that and then that'll give you that same distance the whole way down so you only have to make one cut for each side wall number one is up and it looks pretty cool you can get to see the size of the thing now i'm gonna start building the front end wall and i'll go into detail about the wall on the second on this side because that was a bit of a dick around my first wall. Of course, it's going to be a little bit tricky. But yeah, I fixed some mistakes and we'll do it better on the second one.
just trying to sort out this end wall. Boy, it's tricky trying to get it square because I bought this square down here. Just to double check everything. Whew, so I'm just gonna start building it and just trim it up as I go. I've measured along here and then brought it in to 45 mils. Trying out a new method here with less wall flipping. So I'm just overhanging it here. I've glued it, set it down on the glue. Oh, of course, it doesn't reach. Right, I'll just get a screw in the bottom then. I've made a pen line along the bottom of the plywood because my piece of wood is a bit wonky. So I just pull it straight as I go, screwing it along. There we go, that's got it. Oh, that's nice. Wall number two, or three. I'm gonna start with chopping the angle on this corner here that way I can frame it and then just slide it up and it'll insert like that. I'm going to try it differently building this wall different to the way I've done that one because that was a pain had to keep flipping it over so I'm going to first with my pen draw out all the measurements and then lay and cut all the timber pieces then screw and glue them together so it's just a bare framing timber wall and then lay them on top of each other, flip the whole thing and I can then screw and glue it all at once without worrying about doing big screws, pulling them out and then putting little screws in. So for drawing them on, a big um, lever was quite expensive so I've just picked up some of this angle iron stuff that's about $18 and it's perfectly straight plus I think I will use it on the exterior corners in the end anyway so that works great and then on the top I'm building it so the roof supports can slot in nicely like that so I just simply place that there mark your line go along and I've done it for that angle as well, and then I'll just use my ruler and connect it right through. Now cutting these angles here is probably the worst part. What I do is make a straight line there, flip the square over, put the little pivot right on the corner and get it square with your line that we just drew. And then just mark here where the angle is. And then we can come over to the wood. And then, yeah, I don't know how that's supposed to work. The only way I can figure out is if you put it there, then you've got that angle there. So I'm not going to use that for this application. I'm just going to line it up. Oh, so much easier. How do you even use this thing? Oh well, that'll work. Just kidding, do that mark on a long board so that you don't have to cut the angle twice. You can just use the off cut piece there and it will have the same angle to come up against it. Now I've clamped it in place, lined up that cut edge where it goes with my pen line and I've just left a little bit extra so I can make the length adjustment on the easy square cut. 
Now I've chopped that and I've got my extra length for the uh, angled part of the roof. And the most satisfying part, you know, if I was making a Snickers ad, this is me that would be the part I would include. Oh, yes. That beautiful angle done with a Ryobi skill saw. One cut and you get that perfect line up there. Put some wood glue in there, pre-drill, a couple screws, and then I'll trim the excess off here. I'm gonna cut the studs out now. I need one, two, three, four at full height. Got some good off cuts to use here. And of course, cut the factory end off. Because in this case, they're pretty crappy. In the case of the plywood, we want to keep the factory edge because you'll never be able to cut as straight as they do. In order to cut these other tricky bits, we've got these two here with that angle at the top. I'm just going to cut one a little bit longer, say, we'll go 970. Then hold it in place. Right where it goes. And then once again, easy as use the tracing method. It actually works really well. I'll cut that and slip it in. Now that's a fair income fit. If it isn't perfect, if it's too long, you know, hopefully it's too long, keep the angle cut and just take a mil or two off the end at a time and keep going. Always better to make it too long. And that is all the tricky ones done. I just need to run one there. And I'm not going to deal with this now because I need maybe a 2x4 or something a little thicker for up there. Everything's clamped down. I'm using my patented wood blocks here to help align it all, especially when I flip it over. Uh, we've pre-drilled everything. That's why they make sure you don't put the blocks at the end so you can have room to drill. Now I'm just going to do a dab of glue at the end of each, not attaching it to the plywood at all. And then we'll screw them together. Nice ooze of glue coming out. Cool beans. Where a difference in temperature is creating a voltage, that's called the Seebeck effect. What causes the Seebeck effect? Well, let's look inside this short bit of wire. You might know that moving electrons are sometimes referred to as the seal of electrons. But thinking about electrons as each other, and the same thing happens with the gas, in inverted commas, of electrons in our metal. And the component of the bar of electrons apart from each other. Okay, the moment of truth. These two layers should separate out. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Now what am I doing? <clears throat> so these blocks should hold the position, so I only have to worry about lining it up left and right, not up and down. Um, whoa, ugly lines.
Okay. Oh, this is gonna lie down. Oh man. Just chill, chill there somehow. Okay. Now it should fit back down where it came from. Oh yes. Lined up pretty well there. Oh, just forgot I got to glue it, so it'll come off again. Round two. Now it's not perfectly even, but remember the framing isn't braced, so you can just rack it either way until it's square with the plywood. Just finding the screw holes, making marks. Now I know there's one here. board so that it lays flat. It's done! Now just to sand it up and remove those four blocks on the corner because those little sharp bits are still sticking out. Oh it's so much sturdier now. You know I wasn't a fan of the square head screws before this project but it's worked bloody well. Nothing's stripped out. I think uh, everything coming with the new bits has helped a lot as well. I'm gonna hop in. That's cool. Oh, done. First usage of this door. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice. Oh, this is cool. It's a lot bigger than I thought, actually. Quite a bit of room. Now I'm gonna kneel around in here. Oh, this is cool. I'm excited. I would say my techniques have definitely improved. I was just making crap up as I went with that first wall. I mean, look how ugly the gluing job is. And then come around to here. We've got a nice tight seam can sand the excess glue off when it's done, but it's come out perfect on my little pen lines there. I hope you all realize it's not as simple as it seems in the video. The walls come up and come down a lot of times that I don't video. In this case, I put it all together. It seems to fit well. Everything's the right length, so I'm gonna now glue along here and here, then slide it back in place and put screws all down the side. And then I've got these uh, bits here to square it up. That's where this squares come in very helpful. I didn't even think about this, but boy, I got lucky. When I slide this unit off the trailer, the door is just gonna fit. So I needed to check that it was above the wheel well. But it looks like I'm all good, as long as I don't make the framing too big, because there's not much room. It's actually come out tighter than I thought. I've still got to fit some uh, siding on each side. It's only 0 0.7 mil, so it should be fine. I can't actually move the trailer now, or the, the box, to get to the screws where the wheel wells are. So I'm just going to suck it over with the clamp here. I've already done this side, so I'll try and shimmy it back this way and do the other side. That might be all we get. And then 
all I can do really is put a, a rod in there and yank it over and then, excuse this, it's got the tripod on it, just send some screws down on the internal wall and that'll hold it in. So the front wall I'm doing a little differently. I've just taken a board and cut, glued it on that will fit the bottom. And I'm going to glue it down and then fit it all as we go. I'm just going to line this wall up until it's square. So I'll sit that. It's been glued. And I should be able to push this over until that getting stuck. There we go, until it's even. That looks pretty good right there. Back at the store again. Don't ask me how I got the box off the trailer. All right, check this out. You want to see what money looks like? Six sheets of interior lining ply and six beautiful, sexy sheets of aluminium. Looks like bloody stainless steel appliances. So I'm going to take one of these out. Oh boy, I hope I don't get a crinkle in it. some crazy noises. Okay. Oh. Yo. Where are you go? Wow, look at this. Whoa. That looks crazy. drugs are we on? No, it's just the side of the camper. Anyway, here's an issue that I didn't think about until just now. The added thickness of each end wall is making it longer than a sheet. It will be covered by that, but not by much. I think I'm going to get some thicker angle bracket that comes out quite a bit, and then I'll put that beautiful tape and seek a flex down there. We should be all right. On the roof, it's going to be made out of two pieces, so it'll be long enough, and everywhere else it'll be long enough. So I'll get some some thicker corners just for the four uprights, and we'll be fine. It almost looks invisible. Look at that. How crazy. What? What? And that will do it for the second episode. Man, it's taken up more time than I thought. The video has got quite long. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see the rest of the build. The next uh, video will be about insulating and the electrical system. So I'll see you there in about a week or two. Have a good one.